Hello AOS fans, Robin here and back once more with a deck review for you. Uh, this week I'm taking on the Eyes of the Nine in a game against Pete. And Pete will be playing the Curse Breakers. Yes, he's going to be playing the Storm Cards for the first time. And I'm going to play uh, the Eyes of the Nine. So what have I got in store uh, for the Siege Warband this time? Well, I wanted to try and build something around the Blue Horror. Because I uh, really like the way that car can come back. As long as you can keep Vortimus alive, then you can bring him back. So you're looking at maybe... You know, Maybe I'm losing him once, maybe bringing him back and keeping him alive the second time, which gives you an interesting option for a number of cards and sort of piling in with uh, upgrades and things because you can bring him back and he's pretty tough because you have to kill him twice because he goes to the blue horror, then to the brimstone horror. So in order to be got rid of more than, you know, actually completely eradicated twice, you actually have to kill him four times, which he's not got a lot of wounds, but uh, it does make him hard. And if you do get extra wound cards, I mean, they both count for both him and the, the blue horror and the brimstone horror. So I think he's really, really tough. And you can do some interesting things with him. Now, I got a bit, a bit stuck with this because we decided we were going to do a faction fraction deck. And for those of you who can't remember what that is or haven't heard of it before, basically we insist that we choose some of the, or a lot of the ploys and upgrades and objectives from the actual uh, warband that we're playing so we have to have a third of our objectives have to be from the warband we're playing and half of our power cards now i've got for 22 this time which means i've got to have 11 gambits slash upgrades they have to be roughly 50 50 and we can't go completely 50 50 with 11 but i've gone for six gambits from the box and five upgrades from the box which is a little bit the other way around normally i would try and uh, front load the upgrades a little bit more just so i can get a sneaky extra universal ploy because they're normally better but i have a very specific thing i wanted to do with the upgrades and which meant I needed more uh, universal upgrades. So I've just gone for five warband specific upgrades uh, here. Now, what I wanted to do, and I can't quite do it because of this restriction of having to have half the power cards, I wanted to absolutely load that blue horror with as many of the uh, plus one glory cards as I possibly could, things like a destiny to meet and a slumbering key. And I wanted to really, really wanted to do the tomes because there's the object, objective card which enables you to get plus one glory for every tome. So I wanted to fill the deck full of tomes and then basically load them up on the blue horror and try and keep them alive until the end, as well as all the other keys and things that, that do the same sort of thing. I couldn't actually do that in the end because I had to have this sort of balance of, of upgrades. So I've been a little bit stymied by our factual fractional raw. Uh, but anyway, this is the deck that uh, has resulted from it. Started with the objectives. I've started off with the load of the darkness. Obviously, I'm going to be trying to keep away from Pete. Uh, Pete played the curse breaker, so that there's a reasonably good chance I'll score that in this game. And then chosen champion. Now I've got for chosen champion, and I had, did actually put singled out in as well, which is the night vault equivalent of chosen champion, which is from the shades by a set of cards, and they're basically the same thing and there if you've got three upgrades on a single character then you can uh, score them and now i'm going to be trying to load as many upgrades as i possibly can on the blue horror so they both seem like excellent cars to have similarly escalation my next objective card again i'm hoping that i'll play three on him because that's kind of kind of the reason for the deck's being so yeah and obviously escalation is a little bit easy to score because pete could, uh, could contribute to my scoring that too uh, so that's why escalation's in there now i will be I need another plan, I need a plan B, and I'll be trying to get some glory initially anyway. So I've gone for Bind the City, which is the sort of lower equivalent for the Eyes of the Nine of Supremacy. It's really worth two, so it's like our only way out. I toyed with putting all three our only way out and Bind the City and Supremacy in, uh, but in the end I've just gone for uh, Bind the City and Supremacy. So hopefully I can use those to score some glory. Chosen by Destiny is another eye-specific card, and it's if one or Navia or Tarosh are removed, you score some glory for the other one. So that may happen. Just keep one back, and the other one, if he dies, then I get a little bit of glory. Hardest Knowledge. You score this in every phase of the same friendly fighter has held the same objective at the end of two consecutive action phases. Uh, I don't know about this one. It's a specific one. I've kind of got it in. The specific objectives for the eyes aren't that great. But this one, I may score the the blue horror if he's getting him in the right place, maybe get on an objective. Cast like Silver Tether in line that he's on an objective. So that he, I will have to try and get him on an objective probably. So maybe I can score Harness Knowledge. We'll see. Summoner, score this immediately the second or subsequent time you use Vortimus' action to summon a blue horror. It's a score immediately card, which is good. One weakness of this uh, deck is that there's only one score immediately card, and it's this one, and it's not even going to like to be that early in the game because it could have been somebody twice. But I suppose I will be trying to, uh, well, I probably will lose the Blue Horror, maybe, uh, early on in the game. I'll have to see. I suppose I will be expecting to lose it and then have to bring him back. So that's why Summoner's in there. 
catching up, score this at an end phase if you have fewer glory points than an opponent. This is an interesting one. I'm kind of tailored by it with the way I'm going to play. And I'll be trying to choose second whenever I can, if I can, because there's a good chance then people will score some glory and I'll be behind him. And also, I'm going to be hoping to score my glory at the end. Again, this, I think this would be great if you had the tomes in the deck as well, because you could you know, go hopefully go second in that last phase. You'll be behind and it just adds to that extra glory that you can score. Uh, I kind of feel like I may not come out of the blocks very quickly or maybe behind, it will just help me catch up, literally. So we'll see how we go. Extreme Flank, we've discussed this before, it's pretty much a given for, for every warband, uh, especially with the FAQ ruling, so uh, that's got to go in there for two glory. Should be relatively easy to score again, especially with that blue horror being able to pop up almost anywhere on the board. Fired up, quite possibly the easiest card to score. If you've got somebody inspired, then uh, have that in there. Now, the only problem with this card for the eyes is they're not, their expire condition isn't that easy. The blue horror doesn't inspire, and they have to do some range damage or cast a spell next to you, so it's not necessarily going to be that easy to score for these guys. Singled out is the chosen champion, as I've mentioned, and then finally, supremacy. Okay, moving on to my gambits. I have a great concussion. Yes, great concussion is in there. Keep Pete away from me. Stop him from scoring any objective-based cards, maybe. Uh, just in there, because... Also useful for pushing out to the flanks or, or, or things like that. Inspiration strikes. Choose a friendly fighter. They become inspired. Because of the difficulty of inspiring the eyes, I th I've put this in here because I can inspire Kacharik with it. It will be very useful indeed. Or maybe Vortus. It'll probably be a toss-up between those two, which I inspire. And that will help me score fired up if I get it. Quick thinker. I'm not going to be trying to fight in this game. I'm going to be trying to run away. I'm going to be trying to probably also maximise those move actions, maybe, uh, to get onto objectives and such like. So that's why Quick Thinker is in there. Sidestep, again, just to help things like uh, Extreme Flank and getting on objectives and getting away from Pete. Spoils of Battle. Uh, I may struggle with Glory in this game, and so I've put Spoils of Battle in there just to get a free upgrade out there in case I need it. Uh, Bound by Fate, now we're into the six eyes of the die employees. Bound by Fate, choose two friendly fighters that are within three hexes of each other, switch their positions. This is a really interesting card and could be very useful indeed. Deceitful Step, choose a friendly fighter that is not adjacent to an enemy fighter, roll a magic dice, and then a roll of a, a lightning, they place them on any starting hex, otherwise place them on any objective token. If you cannot, nothing happens again. Could be really useful, really helpful for maybe scoring harness knowledge, or just getting out of trouble or getting into trouble. Uh, one of the two. Driven our ambition, plus two move uh, for the next activation. Uh, could be useful. I've got the, I've got sudden growth in my deck, so I might suddenly want to put an, uh, an unexpected spurt on uh, all the way up to three movement. You never know. Malicious flames, close during attack action or gambit that has dealt enough damage to a friendly brimstone horror to take it out of action. And they do one damage. Now, I kind of, you know, if I want to score summoner, which is only one glory admittedly, then I might have to lose the, the flames. So that's that's going to be good to have in there. Do an extra damage. It's going to be half me to damage uh, the curse breakers, I think. So that uh, might be a cheeky point of damage. Shield of Fate. One spell, I think, that I've got in here. Gambit spell. This cast is plus one defense, and it persists until the end of the round. So uh, potentially useful, and maybe I can cast it to uh, it's a bit easier it's easier to cast I think it's easier to cast than a, than a combat attack against the curse breakers so um, yeah it's my, my almost my one shot at, at inspiring Kacharik other than inspiring inspiration strikes stolen fate you can re-roll one dice for the attack roll of the first attack action made by friendly fighter the next activation well yeah, that speaks for itself really it's quite a useful card to have especially if I can get it on use it on Kacharik before he crumples and then moving on to my upgrade I've got a destiny to meet if it's not out of action it's plus one glory I have acrobatic good for my dodgy warband as it were and uh, it could be useful indeed the formless key is another plus one glory card Bizarre Capering, plus one defence for the horror. Again, all about keeping that horror alive, really. Empowered Sorcery, plus one damage for all spell attacks. So these are, of course, the all rise of the nine specific cards. So I kind of had to have them in there. But that could be useful if uh, Vortimus is called upon to do some shooting. Piercing Bolt, giving Vortimus Cleave, could be handy against the Curse Breakers. There's a handy illustration there, uh, how useful against the Curse Breakers it could be. Silver Tether, it's one for the Blue Horror in the end. Got to get him on a Objective gain one glory point. Strength of arrogance, one for Kacharik, plus one damage. Fane away crystal. Now I like this card, and again it's useful for zipping around the board. Uh, I kind of contemplated taking different ones. 
could have maybe had the formless key. I've gone for the Fainway Crystal in the end. The Slumbering Key, that's the fighter not out of action in the third end phase, gained one glory point. And then Sudden Growth, just to give a bit of extra wounds to that horror uh, after he's been, if he's been killed the first time, uh, extra wounds to make him tougher to kill. With the Fainway Crystal, he can, the minus two move may not be the end of the world. I might be able to zoom him over somewhere with the Fainway Crystal or with Deceitful Step. Now, maybe I could have... And I did an extra, so there is the formless key and or maybe a tome with the tome ejected, but I wasn't quite sure. I wanted to try and get Deathly Fortitude in there. It was a little bit hampered, as I said, with all the Warband-specific cards. But that's the deck. Hopefully, it'll be good. I don't think I'm going to be moving very much in the game. I've got a plan. I feel like this plan may not be so good in a best of three, but this time we're not playing a best of three. So I think Pete will probably uh, catch me out second time around, even if I manage to catch him out first. But we'll see. So that's my deck. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done a blue horror powering up deck. I know a few people have commented elsewhere that they have. So I'd be interested to see a good deck is. Do uh, post in the comments below your own deck list and uh, let me know how you got with the eyes of the night. And until next time, farewell. Bye.